so Diego Maradona just died a couple of days ago, and um, I just want to pay a tribute to the greatest player for football that has ever walked on this earth um, by reading the Wikipedia page about Diego Maradona. So Diego Armando Maradona was born on 30th of October 1960 at the Policiclinio Polyclinic Evita Hospital in Lanús, Buenos Aires province to a poor family that has moved from Corrientes province. Um, he was raised in Villa Firo, Firorito, Fiorito, a shanty town on the southern outskirts of Buenos Aires, Argentina. He was the first son after four daughters. And he has two younger brothers, Hugo and uh, Raul, both of whom were also professional football players. Hmm, I wonder where they play. Um, his father, Diego Maradona Chitoro, was Guarani. Um, according to Wikipedia, Guarani is a group of culturally related indigenous people of South America. And his mother, Dalma Salvadora Franco, Doña Tota, was of Italian descent. So was Lionel Messi. Mm, what a coincidence. Talented Italian descent Argentinian soccer players. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's see. What's more interesting here? At the age of eight, Maradona, no, okay, before this, um, Maradona received his first soccer ball as a gift at the age of three and quickly became devoted to the game. No shit. At the age of eight, Maradona was spotted by a talent scout while he was playing in his neighborhood club, Estrella Roja. He became a red something. Okay, he became a staple of Los Sepolitas, the Little Onions. Oh, how cute. The junior team of Buenos Aires Argentinos Juniors. As a 12-year-old ball boy, he amused spectators. He was a ball boy? Hmm. He was amused. He amused spectators by showing his wizardry with the ball during the halftime intermission of first division games. These days, the ball boys are just there to get the ball. I don't think they get to show off their wizardry in year 2020. <laughs> he named Brazilian playmaker Rivalino and Manchester United winger George Best among his inspirations growing up. Well, I've never seen those guys play, but I've seen Maradona play. So, um, club career. Argentino Juniors and Boca Juniors. Uh, let's see. Uh, October 1976, Maradona made his professional debut for Argentino Juniors 10 days before his 16th birthday. Um, versus, okay, so this is not important. I can't say all these things. Um, a few minutes after debuting, debuting, Maradona kicked the ball through Juan Domingo Cabre, Cabrera's legs, making a nutmeg that would become legendary. After the game, Maradona said, That day I felt I had held the sky in my hands. 30 years later, Cabrera remembered Maradona's debut. I was on the right side of the field and went to press him, but he didn't give me a chance. He made a, he made the nutmeg, and when I turned around, he was far away from me. Is this how soccer players usually describe the situation? He made the nutmeg, and when I turned around, he was far away from me. What the hell would you expect, bro? Maradona scored his first goal in Premier Division against Maplatense. Team San, San Lorenzo 
on the 14th of November 1976, two weeks after turning 16. Atta boy. Um, Maradona spent five years at Argentinos Juniors from 1976 to 1981, scoring 115 goals in 167 appearances before his US dollar 4 million transfer to Boca Juniors. That's quite a ton of money for uh, a, a, a domestic transfer within Argentina. Um, Maradona received offers to join other clubs, inclu including River Plate, who offered to make him the club's best paid player. Nevertheless, um, Maradona expressed his will to be transferred to Boca Juniors, the team he always wanted to play for. Maradona signed a contract with Boca Juniors on 20th February 1981. He made his debut two days after, two days later against, come on, Taleres de Cordoba, scoring twice in the club's 4-1 win. On April 10th, Maradona played his first Super Classical against River Plate at La Bombonera Stadium. Boca defeated River 3-0 with Maradona scoring a goal after dribbling past Alberto Tarantini and Filo. Filo? Hmm. Despite the distrustful relationship between Maradona and Boca Juniors manager, Silvio Marzolini, Boca had a successful season winning the league ti title after securing a point against Racing Club. And that would be the only title won by Maradona in the Argentine Domestic League. After the 1982 World Cup, in June, Maradona was transferred to Barcelona in Spain and for a then world record fee of five million pounds or 7.6 million dollars well back then the exchange rate was pretty favorable for the pound um yeah interesting in 1983 under coach cesar luis minotti barcelona and maradona won copa del rey spain's annual national cup competition beating real madrid and the Spanish Super Cup beating Atletico Bilbao. Um, on 26th of June 1983, Barcelona won away to Real Madrid in one of the world's biggest club games, El Clasico, a match where Maradona scored and became the first Barcelona to pl player to be applauded by arch rival Real Madrid fans. Maradona dribbled past Madrid goalkeeper Agustin, and as he approached the empty goal, he stopped just as Madrid defender Juan Jose came sliding in in an attempt to block the shot. Jose ended up crashing into the post before Maradona slotted the ball into the net. With the manner in which the goal was scored resulting in applause from opposition fans, only Ronaldinho and Andres Iniesta have since granted such an ovation as Barcelona players from Madrid fans at the Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, okay, the section for Barcelona was too long. Um, oh, wait, this is interesting. Um, due to illness and injury as well as controversial incidents on the field, Maradona had a difficult tenure at ba Barcelona. First, a bout of hepatitis and then a broken ankle. Yeah, I knew he suffered a pretty serious injury there. Um, in a La Liga game at the Camp Nou in 1983, um, uh, caused by a reckless tackle by Atletico Bilbao's Andoni Goy... Oh, God. Ugh, I can't say his name. 
nicknamed the Butcher of Bilbao, threatened to jeopardize Maradona's career, but with treatment and rehabilitation, it was possible for him to return to the pitch after a three months, only three months recovery period. He is God. Um, yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Maradona was directly involved in a violent and chaotic fight at the 1984 Copa del Rey final at the Santiago Bernabeu in Madrid against Atletico Bilbao. Again, it's against Atletico Bilbao. After receiving another hard tackle by Texa, which is the same guy that broke his ankle a year ago as well as being taunted with racist insults related to his father's Native American ancestry. These days, come on, these days, racism is not allowed on the pitch. Yeah, these days he would have pulled a Zinedine Zidane um, on, on these Bilbao people. Um, after being, okay, never mind. It was the taunting remarks are made by the Bilbao fans and being provoked by Bilbao's Miguel Sola at full time after Barcelona lost 1-0. Maradona snapped. He aggressively got up, stood inches from Sola's face, and the two exchanged words. This started a chain of reaction of emotional reactions from both teams, using expletives. Um, Sola mimicked a gesture from the crowd towards Maradona by using a xenophobic term. What is it? Maradona then headbutted Sola, elbowing another Bilbao player in the face and kneed another player in the head, knocking him out cold. Nice. <laughs> What's on the receiving end of uh, Maradona blow? Um, the Bilbao squad surrounded Maradona to exact some Retribution, uh, with Goy Cook Texa uh, connecting a high kick to his chest. Okay, this Goy Cook Texa guy and Maradona, and they are just at it. Um, <laughs> a broken ankle, a um, yeah, a tackle and a harsh tackle a year later, and a high kick to his chest. And before the rest of Barcelona squad joined to help Bar uh, Maradona. From this point, Barcelona and Bilbao players brawled on the field with Maradona in the center of the action, kicking and punching everyone in a Bilbao shirt. <laughs> yeah, nice. I can totally imagine what the situation was like. Uh, maybe just YouTube that the game footage or the highlight of that of that game in 1984 Copa del Rey. Um, yeah, so this was actually the last game of uh, Maradona at Barcelona, and since then, um, he's yeah he he's also got in it got into frequent disputes with. Uh, the FC Barcelona executives, particularly club president Josep Luis Nunes, culminating in a demand to be transferred out of Camp Nou in 1984. And during his two injury hit seasons at Barcelona, Maradona scored 38 goals in 58 games. And Ma Maradona was transferred to Napoli in Italy, Syria, for another world record fee of 6.9 million pounds or 10.48 million dollars. Yeah, okay. At Napoli, that's where his true legend at the club level was made. So, Maradona arrived in Naples was and was presented to the world media as a Napoli player on July 5th, 1984, where he was welcomed by 75,000 fans at his presentation at the Stadio San Paolo. Isn't that... Huh. 
Oh, oh I, I was thinking AC Milan. This is San Siro. This is San Paulo. But isn't that um, Brazil? No. Okay, that's Sao Paulo. Okay. Um. Da -da -da -da. Prior to Maradona's arrival, Italian football was dominated by teams from the north and center of the country, such as AC Milan, Juventus, Inter Milan, and Roma. No team in the south of the Italian peninsula has ever won a league title. At Napoli, Maradona reached the peak of his professional career. Um... Okay. Maradona played for Napoli at a period when north-south tension in Italy were at a peak due to a variety of issues, notably the economic differences between the two. Hmm, I see civil war coming, similar to the American Civil War um, in Italy. Uh, led by Maradona, Napoli won their first ever Serie A Italian championship in 1986-87 season. Um, sports writer David Goldblatt wrote, The celebrations were tumultuous. A rolling series of impromptu street parties and festivities broke out contagiously across the city in a round-the-clock carnival which ran over a week. And the world has turned upside down. Um, Napoli would win their second league title in 1989-90, uh, so it's four years later, and finished runner-up in the league twice in 1987-88 and 1988-89 seasons. Um, yeah, and the other honors during Maradona's era at Napoli included Coppa Italia in 1987, um, the UEFA Cup, which was the former, um, or, or which is actually nowadays called the UEFA Champions League, um, but it was called the UEFA, UEFA Cup, that was won in 1989, and the Italian Super Cup in 1990. Um, uh, Okay. Despite primarily playing in a creative role as an attacking midfielder, Maradona was the top scorer in Serie A in 1987-88 season with 15 goals. And that was the all-time leading, leading goal scorer for Napoli with 115 goals until his record was broken by Marek Hamsh Hamshik in... 2017, and I believe that was just recently broken by Therese Mertens, um, and when asked who was the toughest player he ever faced, AC Milan central defender Franco Baresi stated that it was Maradona, a view shared by his Milan teammate Paolo Maldini. Yeah, those two are legends um, of their own as well. Uh, I mean, those who are legends in their own right. That's what I mean. Yeah, enough about his club career. International career, this is where Maradona became the world-famous demigod that he existed for the 60 years that he walked on this earth. So let's take a look. During his time with the Argentina national team, Maradona scored 34 goals in 90, 91 appearances. He made his full international debut at the age of 16 against Hungary on 27 February 1977. Maradona was left off the Argentine squad for the 1978 World Cup on home soil against or by coach Cesar Luis Menotti, who felt he was too young at the age of 17 where his legend begun in, in 1986 in Mexico. His first goal of the tournament came against Italy in the second group game in Puebla, 
Argentina eliminated Uruguay in the first knockout round in Puer, Puer, Puebla, setting up a match against England at the Azteca Stadium. Also in Mexico City. Yeah, <laughs> that's like a nightmare. It's the stadium of nightmare for the U.S. national team nowadays. After scoring two contrasting goals in the 2-1 quarterfinal win against England, his legend was cemented. The majesty of his second goal and the notoriety of his first led to the French newspaper, I don't know how to say this, uh, describing Maradona as half angel, half devil. I think this comment um, has lasted until today, and this was like one of the best descriptions of Maradona as a player. This match was played with the background of the Falklands War oh, between Argentina and the United Kingdom, uh, where the UK sent out like battleships and, and carriers thousands of miles to Argentina to whip their butt. Um, that just shows like the, the difference between um, the military um, the military power between the two countries. Although Argentina did um, kind of defend their uh, their whatever um, for for parts of that parts of that war, um, I believe, Okay, I, I need to read on it. Don't quote me on this, but I believe um, the Brits has won that one. Replays showed that the first goal was scored by striking the ball with his hand. Um, Maradona was coyly evasive, describing it as a little with the head of Maradona, a little with the hand of God. And yeah, it later beca became known as the Hand of God. Ultimately, um, on television in 2015, Maradona acknowledged that he, he did hit the ball with his hand purposely and no contact with his head was made. Um, and Maradona's second goal just Four minutes after the hotly disputed hand goal was later voted by FIFA as the greatest goal in the history of the World Cup. And he received the ball in his own half, swiveled, what a nice word to describe that motion, swiveled around and with 11 touches, ran more than half the length of the field, dribbling past five English outfield players before he left goalkeeper Peter Shilton on his backside with a feint and slotted the ball into the net. This goal was voted goal of the century in a 20, 2002 online poll conducted by FIFA. Um, Maradona followed this with two more goals in a semi-final match against Belgium at the Azteca, including another virtuoso dribbling display for the second goal. In the final match, West Germany attempted to contain him by double marking, but he nevertheless found the space past the West German player Lothar Mathaus uh, to give his final pass to your Jorge, Jorge uh, Burchaga for the winning goal. Oh, Jorge Burchaga, okay. Um... Argentina beat West Germany 3-2 in front of 115,000 fans at the Azteca with Maradona lifting the World Cup as captain. This was the legendary moment. Um, we all remember, we will always remember him lifting the cup um, as the Argentinian captain that day. During the tournament, Maradona attempted to create more than half of Argentina's shots, attempted a tournament best 90 dribbles. What well, counts as a dribble? Like more than three touches? Mm, anyway, three times more than any other player and was fouled a record 53 times. Yeah, that sounds like the number of fouls that James Carden calls 
um, or gets called for every NBA game. Winning his team twice as many free kicks as any other player. Um, Maradona scored or assisted 10 of Argentina's 14 goals, including the assist for the winning goal in the final. To Burchaga. Um, ensuring, I think, oh, I, I remember watching that documentary. I think this was a pretty dramatic game, the final. Probably one of the best finals in the history of the World Cup. Where Argentina, I think they led... And then uh, Germany scored two goals to level the score. Um, and the Bertaglia goal was kind of so... Just as momentum was shifting away from Argentina, they scored the winning goal. I think that's how it went. Um, yeah. Uh, by the end of the World Cup, Maradona went on to win the Golden Ball as the best player of the tournament by unanimous vote and was widely regarded as to have won the World Cup virtually, single-handedly, something that he later stated he did not entirely disagree, entirely agree with. Not entirely agree with, but um, partly agreed. He was the Argentina team um, for 1986, as we all remember. Um, yeah. Uh, regarding his performance at the 86 World Cup in Mexico, Roger Bennett from ESPN FC described it in 2014 as the most virtuoso performance a World Cup has ever witnessed. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. While the Hand of God goal remains one of the most contentious moments in World Cup history, there can be no disputing that his second goal against England ranked as the greatest ever score in the tournament. It transcended mere sports. His goal was pure art. And agree more. 1990 World Cup. Okay, so this is... He almost replicated his glory in the 1990 World Cup. Um, he... Captain Argentina again in the 1990 World Cup to yet another World Cup final. They fell short just by a very, very thin margin. An ankle injury affected his overall performance, and he was much less dominant than four years earlier. After losing their opening game to Cameroon at the San Siro in Milan, Argentina were almost eliminated in the first round, only qualifying in third position from their group in a round of 16 match against Brazil in Turin, Claudio Cani Canigia scored the only goal after being set up by Maradona. I think that was a legendary game. Round of 16, 1990, Brazil against Argentina. Um, in the quarterfinal, oh yeah, that was the goal where Maradona, he basically attracted all of the Brazilian defenders and freed Canigia um, to score that winning goal. Yep, that's how the, uh, you know, that's what it means by match winner. And that is Maradona. That's, that's the guy who can single-handedly change the result of a game. In the quarterfinal, Argentina faced Yugoslavia and Florence. Um, the match ended 0-0 after 120 minutes, with Argentina advancing in a penalty shootout, even though Maradona's kick, a weak shot to the goalkeeper's right, was saved. Ooh, even Maradona got bailed out by his teammates in the World Cup. Once. In the semifinal against the host nation Italy at Maradona's, sport, at Maradona's club stadium in Naples, the Stadio San Paolo, was also unresolved on penalties after a 1-1 draw. This time, however, Maradona was successful with his effort, daringly, daringly rolling the ball into the net with an almost exact replica of his unsuccessful kick in the previous round. I remember that was a pretty dramatic game because, um, 
yeah, as this article or this Wikipedia page mentioned earlier. Okay. South Italy, a.k.a. Napoli, was did not recognize itself as Italy, um, at least from the reaction of the fans in that stadium. The, there were more, I remember in that documentary, there were more Argentinian fans, okay, or there are more fans of Argentina than of Italy in that stadium in Napoli or in Naples. And that caused a huge upheaval in Italy by the media because Maradona was basically splitting their country apart. Oh, I remember that. Okay, that was pretty dramatic. And Maradona, he, uh, okay, good thing he didn't score a goal against Italy, but still, he, uh, yeah, he handed them a defeat and an elimination from, in front of their own fans on their own soil, so, uh, yeah, I can see the dilemma that Maradona had when he played that game, but good for him. They uh, they won and they move on to the final. At the final in Rome, Argentina lost 1-0 to West Germany, the same opponent that they played against in the final four years ago. This time, the outcome is different, and the only goal being a controversial penalty score by Andreas Brema in the 85th minute after Rudy Forer was adjudged to be fouled. Okay, yeah, gotta, gotta check that out, that goal, that goal in the final. Somehow I remember this game to be a crushing loss for Argentina. It wasn't, shouldn't have been even close, but apparently here it's, this is just a 1-0 win for Germany. Okay. Um, and then, by the way, so Germany won the World Cup that year, and, um, yeah, I guess, wait, why was it still called 1990, in the 1990s, why was it still called West Germany? Wasn't ger the German unification in 89, didn't the Berlin Wall fall in 89? Anyway, um, yeah. It was still West Germany who won the World Cup, not Germany. But I believe that would have been the, or that was the last World Cup um, that West Germany played. And from that point on, it was there was just one Germany. Um, 1994 World Cup. Okay, so this is kind of like a a disgrace to his legend. At the 1994 World Cup in the United States, Maradona played only in two games, um, scoring one goal against Greece before being sent home after failing a drug test for ephedrine e e e e e doping. After scoring against Greece, Maradona had one of the most remarkable World Cup goal celebrations as he ran towards one of the sideline cameras shouting with a distorted face and bulging eyes. This turned out to be Maradona's to be Maradona's last international goal for Argentina. In the second game, a 2-1 victory over Nigeria was to be his last game and he set up both of his team's goals. Um, in his autobiography, Maradona argued that the result the test result was due to his personal trainer giving him the power drink Rip, rip Fuel. Hmm, I wonder if I can still get my hands on that drink. His claim was that the US version, unlike the Argentine one, contained the chemical and that having run out of his Argentine dosage, his trainer unwittingly bought the US formula. <laughs> uh, come on, man. Uh, no one would have, no one would have bought that story. Um, FIFA expelled him from USA 94 and Argentina were subsequently eliminated in the round of 16, but Romania in Los Angeles. Wow. Without Maradona, Argentina lost to Romania. Yeah, that's sad. Maradona also separately claimed that he had an agreement with FIFA on which organization reneged 
allowing him to use the drug for weight loss before the competition in order to in order to be able to play. He failed the drug test in, at the 94 World Cup, signaled the end of his international career, which lasted 17 years and yielded 34 goals from 91 games, including one winner's medal and one runner-up medal in the World Cup. Yeah, that was Diego Maradona's club and international career, culminating in that 1986 World Cup win. And yeah, Diego or Mr. Maradona, um, I hope you rest in peace and wherever you are, and you will always be remembered by all the fans in the world who have witnessed the greatness that can never be matched in the history of this game. Peace out.